Welcome to The Buzz. I'm Capsie Steppen. And I'm Drew Schwendeman. Today we have a special interview and performance with Chilean singer-songwriter Yael Mayer. And our very own Brogan Craner hits the streets for another edition of Broken on the Block. All this and more on this episode of The Buzz. It's time for Woke Up Like This, where we'll be catching you up with what you need to know in the entertainment world. Here's our countdown. Coming in at number three, Tyra Banks announced last week that she is returning to host America's Next Top Model. She tweeted out, Mom is back, marking her return to the 24th season of the show that put her on the reality TV map. Banks stepped down from hosting when The CW canceled the series last year, but remained an executive producer when Rita Ora took over as the host on VH1. Viewers can expect to see many more smizes when the show returns. Coming in at number two is Beauty and the Beast's box office blowout. Disney's live action version of the classic fairy tale raked in a record $170 million this weekend, beating Logan and Kong Skull Island. Despite some controversy over a gay character, the film managed to debut number one with a record setting March premiere and delivered the seventh largest domestic opening of all time. Now, I saw this over spring break. I know you did as I well. I loved it too. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. And one thing that I noticed is we did a previous Woke Up Like This about the gay scene that the director really hyped up. It was almost non-existent. So minimal. I think it was definitely exaggerated. I think people were scared over what was like a few seconds. Like it was had no effect on the plot and otherwise um, it was a gorgeous retelling of this classic story. We absolutely loved it. Highly recommend you go see it. But our number one story of the week is we're honoring the late rock and roll legend Chuck Berry. The 90 year old musician famously known as the founder of rock and roll passed away in his home on Saturday. Berry is best known for his classic hits Johnny Be Good and Roll Over Beethoven and was one of the first musicians memorialized in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Several stars remembered him on social media, including Bruce Springsteen, Mick Jagger, and even Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Now, this wasn't someone who, when I got the news notification, that I instantly knew who it was and thought, oh my gosh, how terrible. But once I talked to my parents about it, I started realizing, oh my gosh, this is the guy that wrote all of these amazing songs. And even though it wasn't a recognizable name for me, he had such an impact. Definitely. He had such an influence on the music scene. And I remember, you know, all those push alerts saying Chuck Berry. He isn't like a recognizable name if you're not into rock and roll music. But you definitely know Johnny B. Good, and all the music we listen to now has definitely been affected by his contribution. So yeah. um, rest in peace to him, and we'll always remember him and thank him for his work. Yeah. Well, on a different note, if you're like me, it was particularly rough to get out of bed this morning after a week of relaxation. Let's see what the rest of the Buzz team was up to over spring break. What's up, Trojans? Brogan Craner here, and we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day here in Manhattan Beach. Woo! Yeah. Hi guys, it's Katzi. I'm doing what I did for most of my spring break, which is sleep in my bed. I did a couple of other fun things. I mostly just hung out at home in Orange County, and I went to Disneyland, so that was fun, but mostly sleep. Hey buzzers, this is Betsy Carter reporting from Oahu, Hawaii. Check out the view. Hey Buzz fam, I was in Mexico this spring break, but all my footage got lost, so now I'm in PV and I found some goats. That's okay, there's a fish head right there. Dead fish everywhere. Oh my gosh, flies everywhere. Ew, ew, there's the body of a fish there. I have to go. I'm in this library trying to graduate in a month. It was a cute idea. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the world according to Eric. It's been a minute since we broke bread, so pull up a chair. Stay a while. <laughs> I did some last minute catching up yesterday just to prepare for you guys, and there were a few things that I just wanted to lightly touch upon. You see the spirit fingers? Touch upon. <laughs> Number one, DJ Khaled's baby. DJ Khaled's baby is my new favorite person on earth. That's all I want to say about that. Number two, 
I see y'all didn't get rid of the Kardashians like I asked, but that's fine. Just know that every day we keep them around is another day we stray further from God's light. Apparently, Kendall Jenner was robbed of over $2,000, two, no, $200,000 worth of jewelry. And then the sister store, Dash, yeah, that was robbed too. You know what? If y'all don't get this first family of trifling life off my television set, look, Kendall, you're the only person I like at this point, so I don't want to say that you're lying, but with Chris leaking Kim's sex tape and y'all supposedly inventing box braids, I don't know what's fact and fiction. Next, Beyonce not wanting to disclose her Snapchat. Um, do y'all not know the Beehive? These are the same people that single-handedly ended Carrie Hilson's career. They are crazy. I wouldn't want them on Snapchat either. They're probably asking Beyonce if they can be the godparents to the twins. No, no, absolutely not, no. Last but not least, this interview on Fox News with Kimberly Gofoyle talking about Snoop Dogg and Bow Wow. I can't even recap this one. Can we roll the clip? What, do you th what should the Secret Service do, Kimberly? Uh, it's an actual threat. I mean, yeah. it the kill pimping them. her out? Kill them. Yeah. Okay, yes. No, I would think it would be fantastic if Snoop and wannabe Snoop got a visit from, like, the federal marshals, and let's see how tough and gangster they are then. Cannot and will not be bothered with Fox News. Granted, I do not support any abuse of women. It's not funny at all, and Bow Wow should not be talking about pimping anyone, especially since he took his braids out. But the fact that these posted children for osteoporosis are su suggesting that Bow Wow and Snoop Dogg should be killed is not okay. Check yourself, Fox. Thank you for watching The World According to Eric. Let's send it over to Brogan on the Block. What's up and welcome to Brogan on the Block. I'm Brogan Craner. Twitter has always been a place where people can share their opinions and celebrities are no different. So that's why this week we are looking at some of the craziest celebrity tweets of all time in a game we like to call Celebrity Tweet Off. And playing that game, we have Tiffany. How are you, Tiffany? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Now, how active on Twitter are you? I'm pretty active. I'm on there every day, so I would say pretty active. Okay, so you should be pretty good. Maybe you've even seen some of these tweets live as they've been tweeted. Maybe. All right, so here's how the game will work. We are going to have five tweets from celebrities that they have actually posted. As crazy as they are, they have actually posted these. And you will have to guess who tweeted them out of two options. If you get three out of five correct, you get a big prize, all right? Okay. So here we go. Round number one, first tweet, tweeting off against each other, we have Britney Spears and Kim Kardashian. Okay. Who tweeted this? Cowabunga, dudettes. I'm so pumped to be on this surfing kick. Who else surfs out there? Gnarly day in the H2O, riding waves. Britney Spears? Wrong. It was actually Kim Kardashian, if you can believe it. How crazy is that? <laughs> that doesn't sound like her. Crazy. It was, that's actually pretty gnarly. All right. Tweet number two, tweeting off against each other, we have Chris Pratt and Kevin Hart. Who tweeted this? Why is it called a snickerdoodle? And who's the person who came up with that name? I bet he was a real a-hole. Chris Pratt. That is Chris Pratt, correct? That is definitely something he would tweet. 100%. Now, who tweeted this one? Tweet number three, tweeting against each other, we have Chrissy Teigen and Amy Schumer. They tweeted, at the real Donald Trump, one time I stayed in your hotel and there was an old turd in the toilet. Chrissy, maybe. Definitely Chrissy. Definitely Chrissy. Yeah. Chrissy takes any chance she gets to yeah. criticize Donald Trump, 100%. Now, tweet number four, the, the uh, options are Mike Pence or Donald Trump, so he's coming back around. Okay. And tweet number four is, the U.S. Consumer Confidence Index for December surged nearly four points to 113.7, the highest level in more than 15 years. Thanks, Donald. Maybe Mike Pence. Wrong. It was actually Donald Trump who thanked himself. Oh, okay. So... But that's very Donald. Okay. Very Donald, yeah. <laughs> All right, final round. You have two points. If you get this one, you, get, you win the prize. If you don't, you get a punishment. Oh, so here we go. Tweet number five. Who tweeted this? Kesha or Kanye? Pee pee on the street. Popo, come and get me if you can find me. I blame traffic. Kanye. Wrong. It was Kesha. It was Kesha. But let's see what your punishment is. Oh, you have to hear some of Jaden, Jaden Smith's tweets from his book, The Word According to Jaden. Let's hear some of them, okay? Okay. Let's hear what some of his tweets are. Dying is mainstream. Hashtag money. It's pretty bad. Okay. <laughs> Most trees are blue. How can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? I mean, these are pretty bad tweets, guys. Like, let's be real. Okay. That moment when peeing feels so good, you start crying. That's pretty bad. Anyway, your punishment is that you get to take this home, become okay. well-versed on the word according to Jaden. But thank you for t playing, Tiffany. Really appreciate it. Did you have a good time? Yeah, I have a great time. All right, that will do it for us here on Brogan on the Block. I'm Brogan Craner, and thanks for watching. 
Last week, several female celebrities' private photos were leaked to the internet, including Emma Watson and Amanda Seyfried. Did you miss the news? Honestly, it's not hard to, considering this happens way more than it should. In fact, this photo leak is eerily similar to what happened in August 2014, when dozens of female celebrities, including Jennifer Lawrence, Kaylee Cuoco, and Kirsten Dunst, had their photos leaked. This event was disgustingly nicknamed The Fappening. Guys, this is getting old. Oh, seriously? Jennifer Lawrence responded to Vanity Fair in 2014 after her photos were leaked. It is not a scandal. It is a sex crime. It is a sexual violation. It's disgusting. The law needs to be changed, and we need to change. She continued, I don't want to get mad, but at the same time I'm thinking, I didn't tell you that you could look at my naked body. She's right. This is a gross sexual offense. You are looking at private moments which these women have not consented to share with you. Now, whether or not you think it's a dumb move to share nude photos with someone, that is beyond the point, because these women have had their private actions made public against their will. Wow. Wow. The blame that we place on women for sending nude photos is all too similar to our society's vicious rape culture. When I hear phrases like, don't want your nude photos posted online, don't send them to someone. All I hear is, don't want to get assaulted? Don't wear a short skirt. It's disgusting. We need to start holding men accountable for their actions. How about instead of blaming these women for sending photos, we blame the disgusting hackers that violated their privacy? And you know, it's funny how this isn't really an issue with male celebrities. Nope. Nope. I don't care if you send nude photos to every person in your address book. That does not give them the right to distribute those private photos of your body. So next time a celebrity's nude photos are inevitably hacked into and released, just don't look. And no excuses. If I could resist looking at Justin Bieber's nude photos, you can resist too. Why don't we send it back over to my favorite co-host, Drew Schwendeman, who's on the couch for Pillow Talk. Ah, uh, I love you too, Katzi. Joining me today, we have Yael Mayer. She's a Chilean singer-songwriter whose songs have appeared in shows like Parenthood, Private Practice, and even Awkward on MTV. She just performed at South by Southwest and will be performing again tonight at the Hotel Cafe. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. So before we're lucky enough to hear a performance from you live on our show, we wanted to get to know a little bit more about uh, you as a singer. So what kind of attracted you to the guitar and singing in general? Uh, so I started playing music when I was very little. I was five years old, started playing piano. When I was about 13, I started playing guitar and writing my own songs and performing them in festivals and things like that. And it just became this thing that I did. So I just kept doing it. Lovely. And how um, is music an outlet for you? Uh, well, it's, you know, it's my life. It's what I do for a living. And it's also what I, what keeps me sane. <laughs> uh, definitely yeah. keeps me sane too. But, you know, <laughs> um, your album Warrior Heart was internationally acclaimed. So can you kind of tell me a little bit more about what went into writing those songs and the inspiration? Well, yeah, I think every single album that I do is sort of like a diary in a way of that time of my life uh, you know I'm inspired by the things that I'm going through and that I'm living through uh, every single song has a different topic and a different inspiration and you know the song I'm going to play today uh, was inspired by changes just you know changes are part of life they're often not easy uh, one door closes another opens but you know you have to go through it so this this particular song is called, called Carry On. It's about that. But the album in general was inspired by many different things. Cool. And then we know you're coming up with new music now. So what kind of inspiration is driving you for your upcoming album? Oh, yeah. No, the upcoming album is just a heartbreaking tearjerker. You know, you're going to listen to it and just mush. Did something trigger <laughs> that? You know, like a personal event? Yeah, I had my heart broken. <laughs> oh, no. It's okay. We all go through it. Uh, you know, it's painful when it happens. Uh, thankfully, I have something that I can turn to, and it just helps me heal and process, and I turn my emotions, and I, 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 I channel them, and I turn them into music, and yeah. that's very, you know, soothing to me, and I hope it's going to be for everyone else when I 
you know, hand it over. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll love it. And you know, one thing besides writing beautiful songs, you also have beautiful music videos. Thank you. Um, so Warrior Heart, where did you shoot that? You know, it looked like a desert, but you looked great in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hunt uh, is the one in the desert. Um, yeah, well, that was shot in Chile. Um, the, we shot it in the Andes Mountains. It's a very deserted, that area, because, you know, as you go higher in the mountain, it's colder and colder. There's less and less vegetation. Uh, it's a very beautiful place. And we wanted that video to be, to, to, to have nature be a main character in the video. So that's what we did. And yeah, I'm very proud of it. I'm happy to showcase, you know, the nature of my native country, like in my yeah. videos, because it's very beautiful. And, and I want people to go it and see it. <laughs> are we going to see more Chilean influence in like your future video videos or even in your songs? You know, I never know what's going to be next in the videos because uh, I'm, I'm a writer, I'm a music writer. And so I, I hear song, I hear music, I hear sounds, I don't see images. So the videos are a very difficult format for me. It's a challenge. Uh, and it's not easy for me to find visual artists that I feel an affinity to and feel like I can entrust them with my music and have them create something that is going to be representative of what the music makes you feel that you're going to feel that when you see it so I don't really know what the next music videos are going to be but we'll just have to wait and see <laughs> yeah and we're excited to wait and see but now we have a real treat um yeah will, will be performing carry on um from her latest album more your heart live on our show so we're excited and you can kind of Take it away whenever okay, you're ready. <laughs> sure, I'll do that.
such a beautiful performance. Thank you so much for that. Be sure to catch Ayel at the Hotel Cafe tonight, located at 1623 Cahuenga Boulevard in Hollywood, right near the Pantages Theater. The doors open at 8. Also follow her at Yael Music on Twitter and Yael Meyer Music on Instagram and Facebook to keep up with her upcoming music. Be sure to cop her album, Warrior Heart, right here on iTunes, Spotify. Buy it. It's beautiful. I'm Drew Schwendeman, and we'll see you guys next week.